Good morning. Uh, today's session that is number 34, we will be discussing on international financial stability, how the financial sector over the year developed, how the different sector of the economy interact each other and create financial sector instability, what the theories are there on financial sector instability, what the process of getting financial sector stability we will be discussing in this session. Let us start with what is financial stability. If you see it is very difficult to define what is financial stability. Generally different researchers in on this area mention that when a financial sector will be stable when there is no instability. So, removal of instability is the first to achieve financial sector stability. The question arises here, which are the factor or sources that create instability in financial sector. If you would see <coughs> world financial system over the period has developed tremendously. Here the development in the form of growth, development in the form of innovation and development in the form of what is called deepening and widening of financial sector. Which are the changes that contribute in the development of the Indian development of the financial sector or the growth and innovation in the financial sector. If you analyze the history of development last 30 years, we can find that development of new product market and technological innovation has impacted the financial sector both positively and negatively. There had been significant reduction of trade barriers and financial control last, th last 30 years. Develop and developing country have liberalized the financial market. Many emerging market economies have developed last 30 years and this development took place because of financial decontrol or what is called financial sector liberalization and reduction of trade barrier. There has been cross border financial, uh, financial what is called payment system. The cross border, cross border financial and payment system increased significantly during the recent years. There has been international diversification of asset portfolio. There has been development of financial instrument in the form of derivative product, securitization market, which has no doubt helped in hedging financial risks. At the same time, it has created many different kind of risks in the financial system. There has been greater risk sharing internationally through a broad area of financial instrument. The increasing share of cross border holding of assets, increasing diversification of international portfolio and there has been significant development of new financial market, new financial instrument and different kind of financial sectors. As a result of this, the geographical domain of financial, financial intermediation has widened and it has been more globalized at present than it was before. Because of this reason, there has been increase of financial instability and spillovers of financial risks from one country to another country. The financial instability created or generated in one segments of financial market, in one segments of the country or one, one region of the international financial setup has been diversifying, has been globalized because of international integration of financial markets. And if you see, <coughs> if you see the impact of this financial globalization, we can identify that the impact in, in the interest rate determination process, the impact in the creation of volatility of financial, uh, financial assets, the impact in the export reduction of export competitiveness, in the impact maybe in the overheating of 
local economy and also increase financial fragility. So, the impact can be seen the, the, the autonomous character of interest rate determination is no more. The interest rate definitely determined by the domestic financial demands and supply. However, it is not so, it is not at present. The reason being cited as international character of the interest rate determination. It is not, not only the domestic parameters or domestic variables that determine the in domestic interest rate, but also there has been there has been international dimension of this interest rate determination process. The local volatility or lo volatility of local market financial financial instrument has become globalized at present. The volatility of domestic currency and reduction of export competitiveness is one of the major impact or of financial globalization. There have been overheating of the economy in the form of ex excessive expansion of aggregate demands. When the rupee or the domestic currency increase their what is called circulation because of the FI inflow because of foreign direct info inflow there has been overheating of the economy. There has been overheating we will find in the, in the rising of inflation, circulation of domestic currency and this has impacted many emerging market economy because of globalization. If you see the financial volatility so that is uh, recent years we, we have witnessed the financial volatility very high not only in the reality sector, but also in financial sector also. The financial sector if you see the financial volatility in the form of asset volatility, in the form of stock market, equity market volatility, in the form of exchange rate volatility, in the form of also domestic debt market volatility. So, the financial globalization has contributed more in increasing the volatility of domestic financial sector and rather rather helping the economy in developing itself. So, we have to arrest the financial sector volatility because there is no other way than accepting the globalization. The financial globalization we have to be a part of this globalization process at the same time we have to what is called safeguard our domestic economy from international volatility pressure or forces. If you see the financial stability how we can define it because there are many parameters which, which impact or may be, may be influence because of the financial stability. So, financial stability is a broad concept we cannot define by having one parameter or one line of definition. So, financial stability is a broad concept which encompasses real and monetary sector parameter and focuses on overall stability of the economic system. So, in economic system we have real sector and at the same time we have monetary sector. The real sector is the inflation, interest rate that define the real sector. The real sector is the growth of the economy and the monetary sector is money supply, the financial sector stability, particularly the asset price stability, the exchange rate side, the what is called uh, the increase of broad money supply, all these things, all these things comes in the monetary sector. So, financial stability only can be possible when there is stability of the real sector, that is control of inflation less volatility of interest rate and at the same time stability of the financial sector, financial sector or monetary sector together. So, financial stability is generally understood as absence of any kind of financial crisis in any segments of the financial market including high volatility in financial prices like interest rate, exchange rate, equity prices. With the integration of 
various segments of financial markets and emergence of new financial institution and instrument, the financial instability has been increasing tremendously during the recent years. So, the causes of integration may be causes of the financial instability, nothing about integration of segments, different segments of financial market, emergence of new financial instruments, new financial markets, new financial institution and also instability of the real sector which may also contribute to the financial sector instability. So, what, what way we can define the financial sector instability? The financial sector instability or financial sector stability is that there should not be financial sector instability and stable monetary sector, stable real sector can only perceive, can only define or only can uh, provide financial sector stability. So, financial sector stability is the overall stability of the economy where monetary sector and real sector coexist and interact each other and create what is called a stable market economy. So, if you see the what are the drivers of financial instability? So, drivers of financial instability are the rapid growth, complexity of financial market instrument, inflexibility of what is called uh, safety net or buffers program, cognitive bias, the psychology of the investor, the behaviors of the investor, then also we can say that the adverse leadership, the real economic suck the effective control action, all these things can drive the what is called the financial instability. We will be discussing each of these segments or each of the contributor to the in financial instability. Let us first discuss a rapid growth. If you see last 30 years there has been significant growth in the world economy, the growth redefined the shape of the economy, shape of the world economy last 30 years many manage, many emerging market economy developed themselves, new market economy created. The developing world particularly the uh, China, India, the Brazil, Mexico, Philippines they developed themselves and created what is called emerging market economic phenomenon. This rapid the financial crisis generally follow a rapid grow, economic growth and expansion with aggressive financing innovation and over optimism. Because the contributor in the finance rapid growth is the aggressive market economy. The aggressive market economy created through rapid innovation and over optimism and that lead to financial sector instability. The complexity of financial market particularly expanding size, scope of the economy, the more complexity because of the depositors when hard, hard for the depositors and investor to understand what is actually going on in real financial sector. The complexity of financial innovation innovated product, the complexity of market economy, the complexity of rules regulation, the complexity of what is called the financial institution way of working that actually redefine what is called the depositors and investors investor to understand the financial market. So, when depositors, the investor and the borrowers they could not understand the financial sector, they take a maximum risk in the financial market and because of this that financial market become an unstable and the instability of financial sector or one segment of the financial market spread over to other sector of the economy and economy as a overall become unstable over the period. If you see inflexibility, inflexibility one of the drivers of the financial instability. What is inflexibility? It is nothing but the absence of sufficient safety or buffer or cushion against shock. Inflexibility means whenever there is a financial crisis whenever there is one segment of the financial market is highly highly volatile, 
what are the safety measures we have in introduced to safeguard the financial system. The safety nets are absent in financial market nowadays and because of these safety net program, the depositors insurance facility, the protection to small investor, all these things are not there in the many, many, many part of the world economy, many countries at present and because of the inflexibility created more financial instability in the, in the economy. The cognitive bias and other drivers of the financial sector instability. If you see what is cognitive bias, the cognitive bias is the behavior of the investor, the behavior of the trader. So, if you the trader's behavior, the trader's investor behavior lead to financial sector instability also. Psychologists and behavioral economists such as Nobel laureate economy Daniel Kahn Kahneman has documented cognitive bias in markets such as over, over optimism, over pessimism, failure to ignore sunk cost etcetera can lead to can lead to what is called irrational behavior and such as bank runs, cash holding, excessive risk taking, risk taking investment all these things contribute to financial sector instability. When market is up, over optimism of everybody every, all investor take more and more position in the market. This is called holding behavior. The hard behavior created created in the market may lead to financial sector instability. And the behavioral economists have dubbed, have con considered the cognitive bias as in the form of over optimism, in the form of pessimism and this has created many financial sector instability in the over last 30 years. If you see other drivers is the adverse leadership. What is adverse leadership? Leader to think and advently or inadvertently in advance of crisis that elevate risks. Because in the financial sector leaders, they should predict the financial sector crisis or they should try to protect the financial uh, investors and adverse leadership. because. When the leader of the financial sector could not understand the behavior of the financial market that create that create more risks in the financial sector. The real economic sec another drivers of financial sector instability there will be some event that leads to what is what is called depositors investor become more critic and oxia trigger the panic. Economic real shock economy economy real sector of the economy that is the growth of the industrial product, the growth of the economy, the growth rate of GDP may inflation, interest rate may sometime, sometime what is called uh, uh, give some signal to the financial sector instability. And we as a investor, as a depositor, as a uh, players in the financial sector could not understand this and this lead to panic behavior. When IAP index of industrial production decline because every month IAP may come, the figure may uh, ups and downs will take place and when there is up the investor in the financial sector take more risks in the financial, in financial investment. When there is down they become panic and this lead to panic and optimism together lead to crisis in the financial market. The real economic sector or real sector shock may created some kind of financial instability and nowadays when the real sector and the monetary sector are interactive each other and the real sector phenomenon has been generating financial crisis in recent years. Effectiveness, effectiveness of collective action, there are another drivers of financial sector instability. The depth and duration of financial crisis is determined by the effectiveness of collective action. When there is a financial sector crisis, collectively you have to take measures and the depth and the duration of this financial crisis is determined by the effective collective action. When collective actions are taken, taken by the leader, by the regulator of the financial sector, they generally see the duration of financial crisis. The duration of financial crisis can be reduced when collectively we fight with the financial sector instability. Such action include organization of pools of liquidity, the rescue of institution and generally effective effort, efforts 
to restore confidence. The financial sector instability generally reduces the confidence, business confidence in the economy and business confidence may can, can only be possible to increase when collective actions are taken. And collective actions in the form of reorganization of financial market, the collective action may be in the form of uh, pumping of liquidity, collective action may be in the form of buying of what is called rotten assets, collective action may be in the form of reorganization of financial institutions and market by, by what is called uh, pump priming, priming program of government, may be confidence in building measures, all these things possibilities are there when collectively you can fight with financial sector instability. The effectiveness of collective action may reduce the financial sector instability or duration of the financial sector instability. So, this is also one of the drivers of financial instability. When there is collective actions are not there, financial instability spread may much many years. If you see other drivers are, the, are there like drivers of what is called the monetary sector real sector integration side, the monetary sector real sectors are not integrated. So, the, the, the pulse and prime programs of government like fiscal policy, the monetary policy may not, may not give some kind of signal to financial sector. That would be co cooperation between the monetary sector and the real sector to reduce the burden of the financial sector instability and once the financial sector unstable or financial crisis is there, how to overcome it that overcome from the financial sector, financial sector instability is possible only there, will, there should be collective action both from the monetary, monetary side and also from the real sector side. Then question is here, there are many theories of financial instability. The question what are the theory over the period developed to, redef to define the financial sector instability, to create what is called uh, some kind of um, programs or some kind of collective action to fight with financial sector instability. The theories are primarily broadly defined in the form of what is called monetary approach, non-monetary approach and also asymmetric information approach. We will be discussing each of the three approaches of financial sector, financial stability theories. So, monetary approach, the here monetary, monetary sector regulator particularly the central bank, central bank play leading role in, in reducing the financial sector instability and because they play the, they play the prime, lo, prime roles in developing financial sector and developing the money liquidity system in the economy, the payment system in the economy. So, many theories developed through the monetary approach side. So, monetary approach enunciated by Friedman and Squads that it traces the financial stability to banking stability. They consider the financial sector stability as a banking sector stability. It identify financial crisis with banking panic and either cause or aggravate monetary contraction. When there is a banking sector crisis, it leads to financial sector crisis because banks are the backbone of payment system. Banks are the backbone of li providing liquidity in the system. When banks are run, bank, banking panics are there, it creates financial sector instability. And the monetary, monetary theories, the monetary theory particularly and the developed by Friedman and Squares, they define the financial sector instability in the form of banking sector instability. Because banking sector is the major, play the major role in monetary sector development in that transmission of monetary sector signals to financial sector. They act as the intermediation between real sector and monetary sector when banks are in panic, it create financial sector instability. The non-monetary theories, non-monetary approach is nothing but the financial fragility debt deflation approach. The non-monetary approach also known as financial fragility debt and deflation approach. Here the theory regards crisis 
and contraction in economic activity as inevitable consequences of excess economic boom. Modern proponent of this views are in Minsky, Kindleweiser, Kupman, Friedman and King who extended the argument made by Fisher. Actually, the Fisher the first developed the bank, uh, what is called non monetarist approach or the fragility, fragility debt deflation approach uh, towards financial sector instability. And this theory has been further developed by uh, Minsky, Kendallweiser, Koopman, Friedman and King. They consider the economic activity in the form of contraction, in the form of expansion that contribute to financial sector stability, instability. Because the banking sector act as the intermediation between the real sector and monetary sector. The real sector expansion, real sector contraction lead to rising of debt and when the debt in the economy increases, it creates financial sector panic and financial sector instability. So, the expansion or contraction of economic activity that actually contribute to financial sector instability as per the non monetary approach consider financial sector instability as a financial sector fragility, debt and inflation side which contribute to financial sector instability. So, monetary approach, monetary approach consider banking sector fragility that contributes to financial sector stability, instability and non monetary approach consider real sector instability that actually give provide that actually create financial sector instability. So, if there are other theories are there, there are asymmetric information theory also there. Asymmetric information because the financial sector, the major players, the main two different players in the financial sectors are the buyers and sellers or you can call investors and borrowers. The buyers and seller when there is asymmetric information are there between buyers and seller they are created that lead to financial sector instability. So, asymmetric information approach states that lenders are not adequately informed about the background of borrowers and the viability of the borrowers lead to this which lead to potential return of alternative project thereby rendering a source of financial instability. So, in the economy there are borrowers are there, the lenders are there. So, who lender provide money and borrowers take the money for development of the different kind of project and growth of the real sector. When the lender do not know about the quality of the borrowers, the viability of the borrowers and there is in asymmetric information, information are lack between the borrowers and lender that is lenders are not so not sufficiently provide different kind of information about the borrower. When the borrowers become default, it leads to financial sector instability. So, here the economy is defined in the form of lenders and borrowers and lack of information with about the borrowers with the lender lead to financial sector instability. At the same time also when the lender provides borrower for financing different kind of investment project, the investment lack of in information about the success and failure of the information about the investment project lead to financial sector in crisis. So, when lenders do not have sufficient information about the project viability of the project the viability of the borrower this lead to financial sector instability. There are also asset liability mismatch approach when asset liability mismatch approach provide particularly the it lead to banking sector crisis and banking sector crisis lead to financial sector crisis. When banks created assets through the liability or the depositors money 
and the assets are not giving income to the borrower to the banks, asset become non performing asset. The it leads to financial cry banking crisis, which further lead to financial sector crisis. Similarly, recent approach like incentive structure approach. What is incentive structure approach? Rajan, Rajan 2005, the Raghuram Rajan recently 2005 in his paper, in his research paper argued that changes in the financial sector have altered the managerial incentive, which in turn alter the nature of risks undertaken by the financial system with some potential potential for distortion because the financial sector are ruled or the managed by the what is manager managers when manager incentive the salary perks incentive of the manager depends upon the returns what they are getting from the financial market the potential it create the manager take more risks because when they take more risks there will be more return and when there is more return they will get more managerial incentive and this lead to distortion in financial system and the distortion lead to creation of potential risks and this lead to further financial crisis. So, what Raghuram Rajan argue? He argued that the managerial incentive leads to more risks in the financial system and when the financial system is on the top of a higher risk potential risks there will be financial crisis. Is there any other approach? This free approach the four approach define what is called the financial, financial sector instability or what is called different, different theories of financial sector. The financial sector theory argued that it is a monetary activity or the banking crisis that, that lead to financial sector instability. The non-monetary approach mentioned that is a over optimism, expansion, contraction of the real sector that lead to financial sector crisis. Then asymmetric information approach mentioned us that it is a lack of information with the lender about the borrower, about the investment project that lead to financial sector crisis. The asset liability mismatch or the as when the assets, the banking assets uh, do not create income and become non-performing, it lead to financial sector crisis. And Raghuram Rajan recently argued that it is a managerial incentive lead to financial sector crisis because manager take more risks for more incentive and when the economy and the financial system on the top of a financial uh, more risks it create financial crisis. So, these are the theories of financial, financial instability or financial crisis. Let us find define actually in Indian financial system what is the level of stability, who, which are the factor or indicator that define stability in Indian context and how this factor develop over the years, how the this factor or the variable have migrated to different phases of economy activity and how the we can define which what, what is the level of financial stability in India at present. Let us define what is called financial sector stability indicators. So, what we may what we understand from the theories of financial crisis of financial instability that from there you can derive the variables or indicators of financial stability or instability in general. So, high volatility of asset prices, rising interest rate, liquidity crisis, high default migration of corporate rating, rising non performing assets of the bank, excessive volatility of exchange rate, rising current account deficit of the government of governments, then rising inflation. All these things contribute or the leading indicators of financial sector stability or instability. Let us discuss each of these indicator in the Indian context. So, if you see first thing you will decide about the volatility of the exchange rate. 
Here I have given you the graph what is called 2008 when the financial sector international or the world financial sector crisis started in 2008 till now it is continuing also till 2012-13 it is continuing. What is that the fluctuation of in rupee Indian rupee against the US dollar the volatility of the spot rate. I have taken the monthly volatility of the spot rate from 2008 to 2012. If you see January month 2008, it was exchanged at something around 38-39 rupees. In 2012 January, it is now something around something around 49-48-49 rupees. So this graph, 2012 graph and 2010 8 graph. The you see how the rupee has become highly fluctuate and depreciated over the year because of the because of the what is called instability of the world economy, which actually started from 2008 onwards. So the graph indicate the rupee has has been depreciating over the year because of the financial sector instability, and also at the same time rupee is fluctuating, fluctuating or volatility volatile over the periods. This indicate the volatile and the depreciation together indicate the Indian economy not so much stable as compared to 2008 and 2012. Similarly, next indicator the volatility indicator I have taken rupee in the exchange rate volatility. You see the volatility in 2008, 2008 that is this graph indicate the volatility 2008 is quite high because that time the uh, the actually world economy was unstable and the instability in the world economy started during 2008. This volatility over the period has decreased in 2010, 12 also rupees is volatile, but not so much as compared to 2009 and 10. However, rupee has been depreciating over the year that also there over the period. The volatility and depreciation indicator indicate Indian economy is unstable in from 2008 onwards. Next indicator is the interest rate. For interest rate, I have taken the government of India 10 years yield and I have taken the data from 2009-10 to 2011-12. If you see the 2009-10 data, the yield was not so much, interest rate was not so high. With the progress of the financial crisis 2010-11, interest rate increase, uh, yield has increased, interest rate also rising over the year. At the same time, 2011-12, interest rate further increase, further increase the graph, green color graph is increasing, the interest rate further, yield has further increase. So, this indicates the from 2009-10 onwards, the interest rate has been increasing and it is it, from 6.42 in something uh, in 2009-10 April, it has increased to something around 8.42 nearly 200 basis point, nearly 200 basis point increase. Why the government regulatory increase the interest rate? Primarily to control inflation, primarily to reduce the money supply in the economy, so as to arrest the instability in the financial sector. So, another indicators, the indicators of liquidity. Here I have taken liquidity of the economy that is M1 I have taken. You see the liquidity, it liquidity was quite high, quite high during 2008-9, which reduced to negative liquidity. You see 2008-9 something in October, November, actually September onwards the financial sector crisis started, 2008 September onwards. And in October, November 2008, the liquidity was negative in the economy. Economy was illiquid that time, that there more demands of liquidity, liquidity, liquidity was not there in the system. And this has revived little bit, and now at present, liquidity also around 2 to 3 percent is there, till it is not so much as compared to, compared to earlier years. This also indicated liquidity in the system, lack of liquidity or the illiquid system also indicate what is called financial sector in unstable. 
The another indicator is the current account deficit. Current account deficit of government of India, this is nothing but the redux, the export might have reduced, import might have increased, dollar, rupee dollar might have, the rupee might have depreciated further and at the same time FI flow may not be there and during this period which lead to financial sector in uh, crisis or current account deficit. Rising current account deficit is another indicator of financial sector instability. So, if you see I have taken the data of 2008-9 to 2011-12 quarterly data and you see 2000 quarterly data of 2008-9 the third quarter was uh, negative started from the third second quarter onwards uh, up to four, uh, first quarter the economy 2008-9 that is the current account deficit was not so much, but deficit increased from the second quarters onwards and it has been increasing over the year. And if you see Indian account, government of India current account deficit something around more than more than more than something around 70, 80 billion dollar, something around 80 to 90 billion dollar over the years. So, so this indicate the deficit in the economy increasing or the current account deficit increasing and the, this is another indicators of current financial sector instability or instable. When current account deficit is increased, when the export is not picking up, when rupee become depreciating and a net inflow in the form of FI become negative or reduce over the year, this lead to current account deficit and all this indicator that is a lack of FI flow, export reduction of export competitiveness reduce depreciation of rupee all these indicate there is an instability in the economy. So, another indicator is the banking sector indicator when banking sector asset become NPA that leads to banking crisis and if you see 97 onwards the gross NPA of the economy it was quite high up to 2002 after 2002 it declined in 2007-8 onwards that is the crisis year the 2007-8 from 8-9-8, 8 7-8 onwards the uh, uh, world economy become unstable or instability or world financial crisis started that time onwards the NPA has been increasing over the year. Gross NPA of banking sector in India increasing this also indicated indicate Indian economy is unstable. Another indicator is the inflation, rising inflation also another reason for the in financial sector instability. And this is if you see since I have taken the data from 2008-9 to 2011-12 and this also indicate the how 2011-12 if you see 2008-9 if you see red color data we have a negative almost 0 or negative inflation and however it increased over the year you see from the 8-9 it was decline inflation was declining, but 9-10 uh, onwards inflation has been increasing and it is more or less more than 8 percent last 3-4 years. This also indicate the inflation rising inflation also indicate financial sector instability where rising inflation will be there because government want regulator wanted to control money supply by increasing the interest rate by reducing the money supply in the economy and also uh, there will be growth in the economy is not picking up this will lead to the inflation in the economy. High inflation is an indicator of financial sector instability and 2008-9 onwards inflation in Indian economy has been increasing. Another indicator is the asset price volatility particularly the return volatility of national stock exchange. I have taken the return volatility of national stock exchange 5 years. Uh, five, 4 year data uh, 8, 9 to 10, 11, 12 that is monthly in monthly returns of NAC, national stock exchange monthly return, NAC nifty 50 monthly return I have taken into account a month and from 2008, 9, 2011, 12 data if you see the return is highly volatile 2008, 9 it was declined negative market almost down by 40 percent, return was down by 40 percent, 9, 10, 9, 10 slightly increase because some FI inflow are there in the economy, 
because which pick up domestic expansion, domestic market was there. So, domestic expansion was there, but 10 and 9, uh, 10, 11 onward domestic economy also shrink, growth rate decline and it return, return again negative, about 11, 12 again also it was not so much and a negative returns is there, month return is negative. So, asset price volatility is there, asset price return also declining, this also indicate there is in instability or in, in Indian economy is unstable in over the period 2008-9 onwards. Another is a reality sector indicators, reality sector indicator I have taken national housing bank indicators of 5 different city in the economy. The national housing bank generally give quarterly reality index that is demand and supply, the demand of the uh, per square feet area uh, uh, that NSC, NS, NSB giving national housing bank provide and this is the Hyderabad, Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, Bengaluru and Delhi, the uh, 3, 6 uh, prime city of the India, what is the uh, uh, indicators of uh, per square feet, the price of the per square feet. If you see the data, I have taken quarterly data for January to March, then April to June, July to uh, September and October to December, the four in a year four different four different periods and if you Hyderabad reality price almost remain stable, there is no growth. There has been Chennai and the reality price little bit increase last three years, uh, Delhi, Bangalore, uh, Delhi all remain constant because there is lack of demand, oversupply in the economy, lack of demand, reality sector index also remain unstable and there is no increase in the reality sector prices. This also indicate there is no expansion in the in Indian economy, Expa, uh, Indian economy is a declining phase at present. Similarly, I have taken 2011-12 data, this is 2011 data, this is 2012 data, same thing reflect in both the year. So, what are the, we have discussed the Indian economy um, on the basis of various variables and indicator of financial sector on instability. And uh, now question is, uh, question arise, uh, what is the strength and strength of Indian financial system? So, Indian financial system des despite world economy at present in the crisis, Indian economy is growing around 4 to 5 to 6 percent. There may be some uh, negative side of the indicators of the financial sector and in, uh, stability. However, there are some positive features a strength of the Indian economy. The strength of the Indian economy I have identified through different kind of uh, in uh, different kind of what is called uh, uh, indicate uh, different kind of financial sector um, segments or different kind of uh, exposure limits. So, if you see uh, the strength of the Indian economy is the own domestic expansion. So, despite uh, Indian economic crisis the world economic crisis, Indian economy is growing around 5 to 6 percent. The domestic growth potential, uh, the consumer base of the Indian economy is the prime indicators of strength. However, there are other segments of the strength also there. So, if you see Indian economy at present, significant government ownership in banks is one of the strength of the Indian banking sectors. That is why deregulation of interest rate, deregulation of uh, financial sector government stake in the uh, major banks of the in major bank is significantly high. This is the strength of the Indian banking sector. So, Indian banks also provide what is called depository insurance. The depositors money are insured. This is also one of the strength or indicator of the Indian, Indian banking sector. Compulsory investment in government bonds, despite uh, the public sector bank and, uh, and private sector bank need to invest in CRR, SLR, in government bonds a significant part of their deposit that is around 25 percent of the deposit they need to invest in government bond that is also a one reason a strength of the banking sector in India. There has been investment side on the part of the banking for commercial banks, the regulatory investment in the equity market, banks are not allowed to freely invest in equity market. So, equity volatility may not affect the banking sector prices, banking sector asset. So, regulatory investment in, in uh, equity market from the banking sector side is also another indicators of a strength of the banking sector in India. Similarly, regulatory investment in other sensitive sector, 
sensitive sectors of the economy like the reality sector, the exchange, uh, the foreign international dimension of the derivative segment sector, all these things uh, sectors are sensitive to Indian economy. And so, all these sec sensitive sector investment are not allowed or regulated by the RBI, by the Reserve Bank of India, which is the strength of the Indian economy. Higher capital adequacy ratio, Indian banks having higher capital adequacy in the form of uh, risk suited asset ratio, that the capital of the Indian banks is quite high. So, any crisis in the Indian economy or Indian economy or a banking sector, the banks are over capitalized and they can absorb the risks of the crisis. Similarly, least exposure to international market or international banking system. So, Indian banks are very limited exposure to international crisis, international market. So, international financial crisis may not affect significantly to Indian economy, Indian banking sector. Limited exposure to derivative and securitized segments. So, our say, derivative and securitized market is not so developed and also banks are not allowed to invest beyond certain limit in derivative and securitized segment. This also strength of the Indian economy. Then what are the in weaknesses are there? The weaknesses are also there in Indian economy, Indian banking sectors. Banks are not adequately capitalized. Despite 9 to 10 percent, 11 percent capital adequacy, this is not significant to bear, bear uh, any kind of uh, significant crisis. The so, non-banking financial intermediary, that is the mutual fund, the non, uh, the investment bankers, the um, insurance sector, which are not properly regulated in India. So, non-banking financial intermediary sector the NBFC are not properly regulated. This is the one of the significant weaknesses of Indian financial system. There are multiple regulators and different segments of financial crisis, financial market, the RBI, the government of India, the SEBI, Security Exchange Board of India, the NHB, I, um, then, uh, <coughs> then also what is called um, the uh, insurance sector regulator, all these multiple regulators are there and whenever there is a crisis, nobody owns the responsibility. So, regulatory, regulatory conflict also there, you see the one of the significant weakness of Indian financial system. Lack of secondary market of many instrument, debt market, many other market, uh, there is no secondary market. Uh, so, there is no such kind of window to leave whenever there is a financial crisis for the depositors, for the investor side. The lack of secondary market for many instrument, one of the weaknesses of one of the weaknesses of Indian financial system. So, the rating agencies are not there, rating the corporate rating segments are not uh, deeply rooted in Indian economy and also availability of default premia or not there in Indian economy. So, very difficult to price any kind of highly risky financial asset is also one of the weaknesses of the Indian financial system. There are lack of debt in the long term debt market, Indian debt market uh, long term debt market provide capital to system. So, the long, long term debt market is not debt in India. So, this is one of the reason of financial sector crisis in Indian economy also, because there is no, no such kind of what is called capital availability, long term capital availability to absorb the risks. Similarly, fragmented payment system. There are many payment banking system, banking sector one, one, uh, one payment system, reality sector another payment system, then uh, what is called foreign exchange side another payment system. We have fragmented payment system, the fragmented payment system sometime also contribute to financial sector instability. Unorganized cooperative banking sector or banking sector, though commercial banks are there, they are regulated by the uh, Reserve Bank of India. However, Unorganized cooperative banks have multiple regulator, regulated by the State Cooperative Act, regulated by the Central Cooperative Act, banking by RBI also regulate. So, there are multiple regulator in organized, unorganized banking sector and this may also one of the weaknesses of the Indian financial system. So, the at present what the state of the Indian, Indian financial system, if you see equity market at present is highly volatile. The um, high yield on the government, uh, high yield on the government paper indicates the interest rate has not declined. Uh, rupee is depreciating, rupee is depreciating and highly volatile over the year. Rising current account deficit, current account deficit government is increasing over the year. Reducing FI inflow and FI inflow is some extent negative also. This has, this has recently failed the current account deficit. Export earning has been declining. Along with high corporate debt default, uh, 
uh, non bank uh, that is NPA of the commerce uh, banks are in banks have been increasing, food inflation has not reduced over the year, negative growth in capital investment indicated business confidence is not the Indian economy at present, all these things indicate what is called the state of the Indian economy at present, which is not so good and we cannot say Indian economy at present is stable. So, stability need to be achieved through further deregulation, further, further deregulation of the Indian economy, giving confidence in the Indian economy and also through the government efforts and collective efforts, efforts by the different in different sector of the economy uh, to revive the Indian economy and this, this required urgent measure at present to arrest the, neg the declining growth in the, and uh, increasing current account deficit at present. With this let me complete with the this session and uh, references for this is RBI trend and progress in banks. So, that is published by the RBI. Similarly, RBI annual report you can see various issues of RBI annual report. You can also see currency and finance uh, published by RBI different years. These three uh, references will uh, give some kind of more reading material for you to understand the financial sector stability. Some questions I have framed for you. The model questions here def while defining financial stability outline various theories of financial stability. We first you need to define what is financial stability and what are the theories are, are there the monetary approach, non-monetary approach, asymmetric information approach and the uh, asset price, asset liability approach all these things you can discuss in this uh, uh, on financial stability side. Second question is outline various indicators of financial stability. We have discussed monetary, monetary sector indicator, real sector indicator, financial sector indicator. We can identify all these indicators of financial stability. And third question is describe the state of the Indian economy, Indian financial system as per the financial stability. First on the basis of various indicators of financial stability, you, you, do, you first you judge what is the present state of Indian financial system. Thank you.